Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. This video is a continuation of the video where Edelweiss gave birth for the first time on the colony floor without building a nest or caring for her babies at all. Currently, all seven babies are still alive inside the house. They were born last night, so they can still go a couple hours without being nursed. As you can see, the new rabbits we added to the colony recently have very seamlessly joined the rest of the herd. They're all friends and they're all snuggling together. Nobody's fighting or being silly, so that's really good to see. But if we zoom out a little bit, the colony as a whole is not looking very good. Those black nest boxes we had were too hot, so I had to take them out of here. So we're just left with two measly nest boxes and a shade structure thing. So there's very little protection from rain or cold weather or wind, and there's hardly anywhere for anyone to give birth. So my plan is to finish the colony, like finish building all the little things and details I haven't done up to this point. And then as part of that, I'm going to set up the babies in the colony, build a nest like by hand for them, and see what happens. Maybe their mom Edelweiss will nurse them, and just maybe Acrobat, who just lost babies, will still have those mothering instincts, and maybe, I don't know, if she'll take care of them. Maybe I'll try forcing their mom Edelweiss to feed them. I don't want to just give up and kill them all when there's a chance things could go okay, even though it's very unlikely. So that's the plan. I'm gonna finish everything, get the final setup, like set up, so that the rabbits have a decent colony again, and then hopefully somebody will care for, for those little babies. Okay little babies, you have been without nutrients for a very long time. So, we're going to try to help you. We're going to need some fur. Thankfully, I've saved a whole bunch of Angora fiber that is either really short or a little bit matted. Not good for spinning, but very good for making nests. Alrighty, so as you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but hopefully you can see at least a little bit. I have been working a lot today. I had other things to do so I couldn't like focus my whole attention on this project, but I did do a good bit. The stuff I did get done is this area. We now have a middle shelf and then a little place where they can use ramps to go up there. So all the area, both horizontally and vertically, is now being maximized to give the rabbits as much space as possible. But I still didn't get all the nest boxes finished that I want to. I'm in the process of painting some of them. So you know you have to do a coat of paint and then it dries. Then you do another coat and that dries. So that's going to take a while. But I do have some other nest boxes I worked hard to prepare this evening but didn't get very far. This is the current state of our nest boxes. They're just a whole bunch of old like cat litter containers that we found dumped in our woods like when we moved here, but we haven't had use for them until now. We have like 15 of them, and these are just the non-broken ones. Oh, it was so hard and heavy and laborious, but I lugged them all from way out in the woods over hills, and now they're finally all here, but I ran out of light and time tonight to wash them and then set them up properly. But the worst part is over, all the lugging of dirty, nasty buckets. So I am somewhat limited with my options of nest boxes, but honestly, I have the best nest box I could want already here, so it's not that big a deal. And it's this blue one. Historically, this is the favorite nest box. And generations upon generations of rabbits love this nest box with a fierce passion. So I'm going to build a nest in here. There's already some bedding, but I'm going to take a bunch of fur. Might as well use all of it, you know. It's probably way too much, but better safe than sorry. I'm going to make a little dent in the fur. Then unload the babies. Oh, wait. Maybe I should wait with the fur until... I finish forcing their mom to nurse them because the fur might block some babies from being able to nurse so 
Oh well, I was a bit too hasty, but that's okay. Okay, so all seven babies are going to go in here. And man, are they wiggly. And they're tilting their heads up, looking for nipples. Which hopefully will be successfully provided to them very soon. Okay, the plan is I'm going to shove this nest box up against the wall so that the opening over here is blocked. Then I'm going to put Edelweiss in here and force her to stay with her babies for a long time and maybe they'll get some milk, maybe they won't. Over the years of experimenting with different ways of feeding abandoned litters, this is sometimes one of the more successful ones. I really have no good options, so this is better than nothing though. All right, Miss Edelweiss. Now there are a bunch of risks with this method. Number one, it could totally fail and mom just wiggles the whole time and none of the babies get any milk. Number two, which is a little bit worse, is mom could accidentally step on the babies and crush them with her big feet on accident or with her sharp nails on accident, hurt them or cut them or squish them. And then the worst is that she gets fed up with all these little things trying to suck on her teats and she decides to attack the babies and kill them on purpose. So this is by far not the best method of helping abandoned babies, but because we don't have any other litters to foster these babies to, this is one of the best of the bad options left to us. So I'm just going to sit here and hold this still. Sometimes the moms will push the nest box away from the wall a little bit. So I'm just holding it here. And every once in a while I'm going to peek in and see what's going on. Oh, hey, hey, you guys. I just peeked in and she's staying still and nursing them. Her mothering instincts are still kind of there. Let me see if I can get a good shot for you guys too. I don't want to disturb her, but like... Do you see her? See her and the baby? She's staying still. Look at that. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, this may just work. May okay, it's been a good couple minutes of nothing happening. No movement or sounding like she's trying to escape. It's been all quiet. Let's see how she's doing. Looks like she's... Is she still going good? She's... Okay, she's digging. She's getting a bit restless. I'm trying to look at these babies' bellies. I can't see what's going on, but she's getting... Do I keep her here for longer, or do I not? She could hurt them. At what point do I decide the risk is worth the benefit or not? Babies aren't trying to nurse from her anymore. Did you want to come out, sweetums? Sure, go ahead. Come on out. Yeah, I could just... Okay. Thank you. Let's check your kids. Some have moderately full bellies. I mean, this isn't completely skinny, like this little baby. Like, I can... It's hard on... Maybe it'd be hard on camera, but I can tell a little difference. <gasps> This hey hey hey! I think you might got something going for ya. Did you actually feed these babies a little bit? Are your mothering instincts still there? Oh, thank you, dear Lord. I mean, it's, they're definitely not full, and not all of them got anything. But she was staying still and nursing them for a few minutes. Now they're not cold, but they're not warm either. They're like room temperature. You can call it like a living thing room temperature. So now seems like a perfect time to give them their fur again. Okay, so I'm going to make a nice pile. Then bring the babies into the pile. One, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven. Okay, now this fur is short enough that it shouldn't be too dangerous. Sometimes this really long angora fiber can actually hurt these babies. It's so long bits kind of become like yarn a little bit and then wrap around the baby's foot or their head and strangle them or suffocate them. So that's not a very good thing. But, but I tried to keep the pieces I saved very short so that... Things like that won't happen. So now they have a very nice top layer of very warm fur angora fiber. It's like much warmer than sheep's wool. And so they'll have a very nice thick layer of warm fur. And they have a mom who might take care of them after all. Even if I have to force her to do it. And I'm going to set them right here for the night. And say goodnight. I'll probably check back with y'all tomorrow. 
so we can continue caring for these babies and hopefully complete the finishing touches on the colony. Good night!